Hello and welcome back. Playing Oxygen Not Included in hard mode. Dupes are eating twice the amount of calories that get stressed out easily. They don't handle the radiation in this world. So in the last episode, I have packed this rocket with all kinds of goodies from the oily asteroid, the Desolens. And in 1.3 cycles, they're going to get there. So let's just do a quick review of what I put on this rocket. I've got 7 tons of algae, crude oil, 23 tons, fossil 10 tons, iron, 11, iron ore 14, and a little bit more than one ton of phosphorite. Let's enable oxygen production while the dupe is traveling. So they actually, so all my uh, stuff is stored here in a vacuum, so even though it's hot, it's not affecting this rocket. And scientists will be able to comfortably return. I did leave one of my dupes, the uh, miner who has good uh, digging skills, here and they're going to continue to dig out to get uh, more resources so when a rocket returns i'll be able to load it with even more goodies over in the home world where scientists is currently heading off to i'm preparing the uh, polymer press so that i can send some crude oil into a re oil refinery to be turned ultimately to plastic i've got this little pathway up to the top of my base near a rocket where that crude oil will be able to be dumped. So scientist rocket has landed. That has given me this world access to all these resources. So I'm gonna tell the dupes. Don't want you to do that. This undo. Wrangle this critter that uh, I brought along with me. And disable the fridge. So all kinds of material is sitting there. What I'm gonna do is build this little area here for polluted or um, crude oil to be dropped in and pumped. So I'll need to pump me that out of cool amalgam. Though I don't think it's over 75 degrees. And that's going to be piping this crude oil towards my base so I can it produce plastic. After I'm producing plastic, my next project is to have a, a deep freeze in my base. Utilizing the fact that I have this this um, plastic. So right now I'm just having crude oil make its way towards a refinery, which is over here. So we just need to cross this two places. A bridge and another, oh wait, there's, oh, I already have an insulated pipe. Why do I not uh, just tap into that then? All right, so goal number one, produce plastic. Goal number two, deep freezing of food. And that's gonna allow me to store an infinite amount of food compared to the fridge, which I'd have to build a second fridge to actually uh, do more storage. Okay, so I'm just going to finish up this pipe. So it's gonna bring crude oil down. Let's disconnect all of this. So I can just add confusion. Send crude oil places that I don't intend it to. Snap the pipe here, here, and here. And that'll make its way in here. Now I've been building this gas pipe. This is going to take carbon dioxide out of the polymer press and just vent it. I have this carbon dioxide line, but it sometimes gets backed up once the engines are full. So that's why I have a separate line for that going in. So now that I have this area over here, I'm going to tell the dupes to drop crude oil in it. On both of these. Actually, maybe I'll temporarily make them a higher settings so the dupes kind of give that a rush. That's going to put the crude oil in the pump. The pump's going to put it in the pipe. Pipe will lead all the way to the refinery, and that leads into polymer press. Carbon dioxide is going to be going out, and plastic will be dumped out into the world for the first time. And I'll meet, be able to make steam turbines, amongst other things. That's one of the things I need for my deep freeze system. So that's why I'm doing this first. So now that I have crude oil on the way and eventually going to be getting plastic, we can now turn our attention towards the deep freeze system. And here's the polymer press. The first pieces of plastic have been produced next to it. 
I can use that to build various things, including the steam turbines. I can see the carbon dioxide escaping and going out into space. More crude oil being dropped off here and be processed to turn to more plastic. So let's turn our attention towards the ref uh, not refrigerator, the deep freeze. I want a little bit of petroleum in bottles, so that's why I'm snapping this. So one of the dupes could do that. That would uh, that would allow me to start off this process, and I'll show later on. Where did the petroleum go? Oh, I see. Okay. Very funny dupes. What if you smash that one? There, that created some petroleum. I don't need a lot. So that actually might be enough petroleum. So the dupes will need to mop that up. I'll restore this. So that more plastic can be generated. Make sure I get every piece of liquid. Even the stuff that's on top of this airflow tile. So the dupes don't get their feet wet when they're operating this machine or picking up plastic. So let me show you the area where I want the deep freezer to be. That's going to be right here. That's going to store two things, ingredients, as well as the cooked food. So I'll actually store those in two different locations. And what I need is a barrier for the dupes to be able to, or for a vacuum to be able to be maintained on one side. And that's where the petroleum enters into this equation. I want petroleum to sit on top of an airflow tile. So I'm building the airflow tile down here. This is going to be a bottle empty here. This is where I'm going to put that petroleum that I had my dupes mop up just a moment ago. Okay, so the airflow tile has been created. So I'm going to dump a little bit of petroleum on top of that. Do that at high priority. So that they'll uh, find the petroleum over here. Looks like operator is on their way, unless they're no, no, they're they're running the machinery. They don't want to supply. That's too good for them. A uh, scientist, there we are. Scientist picking up all this petroleum, sending it here. I don't need a lot dropped off, so I'm actually going to interrupt them after the first drop falls. That's enough. I can now build the second airflow tile, which I want to be built right here. And then I'll drop a little bit more off. Oh. So again, petroleum, high priority. Oh wait, no, 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 no. Go wait for that tile to be built first. Operator has installed the tile, so I can now put the petroleum there. Do picking up coal. Okay, who's gonna drop off the petroleum for me? Might be one of the other dupes. Explorer, excellent. Dropping that off. Okay, so I no longer need this. I can destroy this. Now what I need to do is essentially make a barrier. On one side I'm going to have my regular base with oxygen. On the other side I want a vacuum so I can essentially protect this deep freeze. It's going to be very cold. So this is just for decoration purposes but I'm going to make this out of gold just to be fancy. So this petroleum will actually act, you can kind of think of it as a tile in the sense that it's preventing a vacuum, or would-be vacuum on this side, from escaping over on this side. And what I want to have here is a door. This is going to be the access method for the dupes. This is going to be the kitchen. This is going to be how the cooking chef grabs some material that they want to cook. And that material is going to sit on these two things. It's going to be made out of aluminum. And it's going to be, one that's going to sit right here. This is the cooked food, and this is the ingredients. So the next part of this is to make the flash freezing system, so I can flash freeze food. I'm going to make this out of granite tiles. And that's going to go along right here. Over six, I need to get uh, someone to dig this out for me. We'll dig this out. Now what's going to happen is I'm going to have 
liquid pipes going through this. And it's going to specifically be radiant pipes. Aluminum being the best. So we'll have that wrap around like this. I'm also going to have conveyor rail. This is going to be transporting food itself. And as the food goes through this, these are going to be really cold tiles. Once I cool them down, it's essentially going to flash freeze the food and then store it at this location. So I'll have my ingredients, as I mentioned, up here and my cooked and finished food down here. So while I'm waiting for this to be created, let's just build the second part of this. So I'll have another conveyor rail line here, here, and a similar thing with the radiant pipe. I can make this out of aluminum. So it's gonna go around here and here. But I also wanted to visit these two tiles to make sure this tile, these two tiles stay cool. So the idea is liquid's gonna go in here. This is gonna be a super cooling liquid. It's gonna make a pass over this, then make its way in here. And it, similarly, it's gonna go up here, make a pass in this, and go out. Conveyor rail. It's going to have, so this is my ingredient line. Ingredients are going to be dumped out here. And I want it to pass through this just before going through here and similarly over here. So it's going to have uh, food in. Let's see, bring the food down in here and go up like this and dropped off over here. This is going to be for the ingredients that go into the system. So I've got essentially food I'm pushing down here and ingredients I'm pushing in here. Make a priority for the middle stuff to be finished. Because I want to build tiles here, but I don't want to do that until the construction of the middle stuff is done. So the one lonely dupe that I left over here, I've got them to expand the solar panels over here and getting them to create a ladder just to make it easier to bring resources back in the future when I have a rocket here again. So now that all the stuff in the middle is created, I can get a granite tile, add it here and here. That'll be enough for me to uh, complete my flash freezing section. Let's build a ladder up and down over here. So what I want to do now is get rid of the salt water. So this is going to be my flash freezing system, but over here is going to be the hot steam. With at the turbine sitting on top of that with aqua tuners. And aqua tuner is what's going to essentially keep this really, really cold, maybe minus 50 degrees or so. So the fact that water is in this area is perfect because that is uh, you know, water will turn to steam, but I'd rather get rid of the salt. So I'm going to dig in here get that to be drained down. I'll give one of the dupes that's local here, maybe Explorer, the ability to dig through that where you explore. Let's give you super duper hard digging. So now that I have this area built up, I'm gonna add next layer of granite. It's gonna go here and here. And to dig over here. Now I'm going to put in some of the tiles that the uh, steam turbines are going to sit on. It's going to be made out of ceramic because there's going to be steam underneath them. There's going to be two of them, so that's going to essentially be ten of these ceramic tiles. Explorer is down here cutting out this area so I can get the salt water here to start dropping. I already see that being the case. So good job. And I want to get the dupes to work in this area. It's wet. It is 42 degrees. I figured I'll put some, I'll give them a little bit of pity. I'm going to give them some Atmo suits for them to be able to uh, explore that area. So that's going to need a bit of power. Oxygen line is heading there. And let's generate a little bit more Atmo suits to put in that spot. To go uh, repair forever. So ready to install the aqua tuner. I'm gonna make this one out of gold amalgam. And then I'll upgrade this to steel later once I have steel. 
So it's going to have a ceramic pipe going in and out. And this is going to be pumping ethanol. Ethanol you can get down to really cold temperatures. I'm going to get it down to minus 50 and push it through this with the help of this aqua tuner. So since I want ethanol, I better produce that and now have an ethanol distillery. Only need to run that for a short period of time. I need about maybe even less than a ton, half a ton maybe, stored in here just to make a run around here and then a trip into the aqua tuner when it needs to be cooled. So now I have this area sealed off, providing power to the aqua tuner and a wall preventing liquid from getting out. Letting the dupes go in here and take all this stuff down so I can get all this water to go into this area. And that's going to interact with the aqua tuner, keeping it cool so that it can do its job in keeping the ethanol very, very cold. On this asteroid, I now have a fire pole and ladder. I just want to do the job of digging out some of these dangerous plants from underneath them before I go into some of those biomes. So I have this dupe here do that. So just having a pass-by area here, getting water to maintain a vacuum, or future vacuum anyway, on this side, so that the dupes can dip down in here and then be able to go into this future vacuum area. I'll have to seal this off so that the dupes can only get in this area both within in here and in here with using the Atmo suits. So I now have a half a ton of ethanol that's going to be enough. We can disable this building, even destroy it. And I'm going to make sure to remove the polluted dirt that has been accumulating here because as I create tiles here, I do not want polluted dirt down here. That's going to leak polluted oxygen, ruining my vacuum. So just bring in heavy watt wires to this area. Just going to disconnect this section here and then bring in heavy watt wires so that I can get the aqua tuner and a series of pumps as well to use the larger circuit. I've got a number of pumps here that I'm starting to build. purpose of these is to create the vacuum. Some that jumps over this. I will get several pumps to feed into this. Those three will go this direction. These two can meet up here and go out over here. Gas bridge, gas vent. So we get one vent over here, one vent over here. Now I just need some power. So do everything with heavy watt wire that's inside this zone. And this will connect to the main circuitry, which has the two hydrogen generators. Lots of hydrogen. So we should be good with power to start this whole thing off with. So the pumps are running, at least some of them. This one is backed up, but I'm going to put in an overpressured vent to fix that situation. It's going to start the process of creating a vacuum. Now while we're waiting for that vacuum, I can get on with construction of the cooling system. So I need a little bit of automation here. So I'm going to take the temperature of ethanol as it goes out of this and then when it feeds into this if it's not cold enough this is going to tell it to go into the aqua tuner if it is cold enough just destroy that pipe there if it is cold enough then bypass that skip that and we'll go in this direction jumping over this and then these two are going to meet at this location just have to wait for that pipe to be destroyed, and then they're going to go up and into this cooling system. And then it's going to make a pass through this whole thing, visiting all these tiles. And then exit down here. Connect that now. 
after. And then it's gonna go into this liquid reservoir. So that's the ethanol making its way around. This is gonna need some power. I also need the bit that's going to take the temperature of the water. That's this one here. Take the temperature just as it's coming out of the liquid reservoir. I'm gonna make this out of iron voiding lead just in case steam ever does spill out. I'm expecting that's not going to happen. It would be a very bad thing. But if it does, it would be a little bit stronger if it was iron as opposed to lead. I've got lots of lead, so I'm preferring that if, if uh, the place is going to be cool enough. And here it is. Ethanol making its way around. So it's taking the temperature here. I did, it just has the default setting, so I'm going to say if it's above minus 50 degrees, you can go through this thing, which means it's going to keep going until we get below minus 50 degrees. That's going to take the temperature here. This block currently is 40 degrees, 35 degrees. That's going to drop quite a, quite a bit. This water here is 42 degrees. It's going to warm up. At some point, that's going to turn to steam. But I'm hoping to produce some steel and add some more stuff and seal this area off, create a full vacuum well before that happens. Much ethanol is left. There's not much ethanol in there. It's kind of like there's just enough ethanol. Actually not, we're a little bit short. I might want to add just a little bit more. Perhaps I should have aim for more like a, a ton, as opposed to half ton of this stuff, but I can add some more. I'll do that now. Getting close to 700 kilograms, so I'm going to now turn this off. Once that's off, destroy the pipes that are going into here. Enable this again, and we'll have our ethanol flying through. So this area now is a vacuum. I create these tiles just to speed up that process so I can remove those. In theory, I can get rid of the pipes or gas pumps, but just in case the, the vacuum is ever ruined, I'll keep them so it can recreate a vacuum if need be, but hoping that won't be the case. So there is ethanol going all around again, going through the aqua tuner. Now if I click on this, I should see 135 kilograms being maintained at this, so there's a little bit more than necessary to go through. This kind of acts as a little bit of a buffer to average the temperature out just a little bit. And already, I'm seeing 13 degrees. So this is warmed up, this hasn't had, this isn't warmed up significantly, 45 or so. But over here, we're already down to 12, and we'll be in the negative temperatures soon enough. So here we are. Got minus 20 degrees sitting here, and it's going down. 48 degrees over here, but I've got a vacuum all around this area. Actually, I want to destroy this to create a full vacuum around it. It is now time Let's see, I don't have power on this. Does this just need a connection? Right there it does, excellent. It's now time to actually say anything that is edible, or I might even specifically just call on barbecue meat, put in here. That way when barbecue meat is dropped off here, or you know, produced here, it'll automatically go in there. Now I'll want to tell them to stop putting that in the fridge. We've got a little bit of uh, 800 kilograms for us, calories rather, 8,000 calories. I want to put that in here, so what I'll do temporarily is I'll build this, I'll put it there, I'll get it to drop down such that this will have access to it. And we'll watch barbecue meat go through the system, flash freezing, and being stored here, where it will never go back. We've got the barbecue meat in here. Let's destroy this. Turn this off for now. Don't want this thing to pick up eggs and put it up here in an infinite loop. 
destroy this one as well. It's gonna drop the barbecue meat down here. This will pick it up, put it into our conveyor loader. Scientist is not feeling so well. The other nice thing about putting it into a deep freeze is because diseases can't uh, exist at negative temperatures. So if uh, food had food poisoning in it, it would not last very long. So it's going to go in here. So this piece of barbecue meat is currently 68 degrees. It's going through a vacuum, so it won't be changing. But once it gets through here, it's 37 degrees, 29, 18, 4 degrees, six, minus 2, minus 10, minus 13. And it's going to go through this, and it's going to be dropped off right here. And it's in a deep freeze. And this one's in a refrigerated state. But what temperature? So we're close. Is your current minus 15? It will continue to go down because it's sitting on this really cold aluminum uh, tile. But to make things work a little bit better, how about okay? I want more aluminum. I'm going to replace the ones on the edges with aluminum. But the food that is there will continue to go uh, down the temperature watching this a little bit further I just realized we're okay critters excuse me I just realized we didn't really meet get our maintained uh, temperature of minus 50 yet so that may very well explain why this didn't arrive in a deep freeze but it's sitting this explain this is uh, this is why it's pretty important to make this out of a metal tile or something that interacts really well with this cold temperature. So if I can maintain this, even if it doesn't get dropped off at a deep freeze, it will slowly get there. But once I get mi minus 50, and then I add a little bit of aluminum, all the food and ing eventually ingredients are gonna be dropped off in a deep freeze. They're in a vacuum, so they're in a sterile environment. They're gonna last forever until one of the dupes goes down here and decides they wanna eat it. So over time, my uh, meat will never go bad. What I want to do now is put in automation to pick up these guys here and have th that brought down for me. Otherwise, lettuce is currently going to go into a fridge. So I think this is the last thing I'll do in this episode. I've got my deep freeze created, so that is awesome. Actually, I might just put this in between because I think I'm going to need two sweepers. This right here, and I'll put another sweeper over here. And this is going to make be a conveyor rail going down. And which one's the food line? The food line is this one. At uh, some point, lettuce might become an ingredient instead of a food, in which case I'll change this, but for now, it's a food source. These two things will need some power. So this is now ready. I can say anytime I see anything that's edible, throw it in here. So once this is ready, and actually remind myself now not to uh, put lettuce in there. So that lettuce that is there, I'll, uh, I'll get it to be dropped off, let's say right here temporarily. I'll do that later. But let's have a look at this. There it is, minus 54 even. That's awesome. And then all the food here, that's currently barbecue meat. Lettuce will be stored there. Eventually all my ingredients and food will be in this location and never have to worry about it going bad. In the future, this is going to be my great haul so that the dupes to, can uh, just go over here, grab some food, find a seat, and, uh, and eat. Over here, this has gotten up to almost 50 degrees. So in this, this uh, next episode, I'm going to build a system that actually handles this turning into steam with uh, these two steam turbines. I'm also going to build 
my metal refinery right here and get this whole system to handle all the heat that comes from the metal refinery, getting that to be turned into steam rather than going out as it is now, dumping all that hot liquid down in this environment. It will no longer do that. It'll actually heat up this area, getting power back. So it won't cost as much power to use that. Anyway, that's the next episode. This episode, I'm definitely going to end here because this is an accomplishment. I've got a deep freezer. My food's never going to go bad. That's going to allow me to store up my calories. Well, thank you for watching. I will see you in another episode. Until then.